Hi, this is Nick Away. I've been invited to come and see the release of sea turtles which have been hatched here on the Padre Allen National Seashore by the Park Service. And this program is headed by Donna Shaver. She's done it for 40 years and she's really got it down. And these turtles are like her babies. And she told me that the turtles make the decision when it's time to be released. And she said, today's the day. And so come on, let's go and have a look. This is so important to show the people what this whole program is about. I mean, they're very much aware that it exists. But now with the beaches narrowing like we've seen over the last few years, this has become more important, hasn't it? It certainly is more important because our beaches are so narrow. Now a big threat to the eggs is nuisance coastal flooding and the flooding out of nests okay. and washing the eggs out to sea. So retrieving those eggs for protected care is critical. And we get a lot of reports from the public, so it's, it's really important that we reach out to the public and tell them that turtles nest here. Okay. Please let us know if there's nesting. Great. Okay, so now I'm pretty sure that I've seen this beach reduced in at least by half in the last 10 years, would you say? And so if they laid their eggs and they were unprotected, they would get washed out and coyotes would attack them and stuff like that. So that your program has actually protected this. And this is now the prime beach for Kemp sea turtles to come and actually lay their eggs, isn't it? In the United States, it's the primary nesting beach for Kemp's Ridley. And we are successfully forming a secondary nesting colony as a safeguard against extinction for the protection of the species, just like the pioneers that envisioned this project in the 1970s mm -hmm. uh, hoped to do. But they didn't know what those threats might be to the species, and now, uh, drug cartels, mm -hmm. uh, climate change, sea level rise. And, and I saw plastic beads. Plastic beach, beads and, and a lot of threats out there. So although we've had progress with the uh, recovery efforts for the Kemp's really, there's still a long ways to go. They're not back to where their numbers were formerly before the species got decimated. Awesome. Are these all volunteers, the ones with the flags? The ones with the flags are all volunteers. We have them here because we don't know how interested the gulls will be with the release. When we've got the large public releases, the gulls uh, will come in and, and think that maybe people will feed them so they'll be interested in the hatchlings. Uh, with so few people here, I'm just not sure. So we've got the volunteers here just in case uh, the, the gulls look interested and we can put the net up well, over okay. like we do in public releases. Now, when when these little turtles get released, what's the percentage survival rate? I know it's very low and that's why your program is so important. How many do you think? Is there a percentage factor you can put on that or not? Yeah, it, it's, it's estimated that only about 1 in 400 eggs will produce a turtle that survives to adulthood. And so the odds are very much against any individual egg or hatchling. They're in a bite size for many different things. So it, it is important that we find every nest. We get as good a hatching success as we can and then protect the hatchlings until they get into the sea. And then they've got to be on their own. But uh, we certainly don't want to lose the nest before they even get a chance to get to this stage of being hatchlings. Okay. At night, they'll see the reflection of the moon on the waves and they'll go to the white of the, the waves. They're just about the size of a silver dollar. Hatching has been underway in these clutches for about four days. It's a slow process for sea turtles where they tip the eggshell with their egg tooth, which is a projection 
it's at the tip of their nose. Yeah, look at that. I can see it. And that helps so that pierces the eggshell, and then their head comes out, one of the front flippers, the other, and then they climb out and flatten in the egg. They're curled, and their yolk is attached uh, to the abdomen, and they withdraw that yolk into the abdomen, and that's how they derive their nutrition for their first few days of life so that they don't have to stop and think about where they're going to get something to eat. Right. They swim, 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 get out to a safe place out in the deeper water away from these near shore predators. Now we're looking, they're going on a journey that's going to be approximately 12 years and then they they come back and they'll be doing their thing. And you can't sex these at this time in their, their this age, can you? No, we can't tell looking at them. These are, are active, they just went into their frenzy, it's their time for release. We don't hold hatchlings for show and tell, public release, social media release. All the hatchlings are released when they enter their frenzy. So once the clutches begin to hatch, they're monitored 24 hours a day so that we can make sure that they are released at the appropriate time. We don't want them to use up their energy scratching in the box and then be too weak to come back to shore. Okay. Now that beak that they use to open the egg shell, uh, egg, does that, that disappears with it age? Does, yeah? yeah. Okay. It disappears. So these are going to weigh 100 pounds next time we see them? In about 12 years, 12 to 16 years, the hope is that uh, the turtles will come back here and the females will come ashore and lay their eggs. The males don't come back ashore, but hopefully they'll be back out here looking for the ladies. We aim to get a predominance of females because the females are the egg layers and they're not monogamous. Um, and overall, we aim for about 70% females produced from our incubation facility to, to be female and to, that also to uh, limit the sex ratio that's been found in the wild with various netting studies of sea turtles. Okay. I'm just watching that one reach the water there, look, it's like ahead of the rest. <laughs> Go on, baby. This is so cool. Thanks so much, Donna, for inviting us down here. We yeah. really appreciate it. Great to have you. We're, we've been working for more than 40 years to form a secondary nesting colony of this critically endangered species as a safeguard against extinction. We're trying to preserve and protect for future generations. And what's more magnificent than seeing a nesting turtle like you got to see a few weeks oh, ago? Oh, it was awesome. It just was a wonderful experience. And now this babies. is so touching. And we want, That's beautiful. We want people to be able to get to see this mm -hmm. in the future. So important. And this species tragically would almost disappear within the blink of an eye. One human generation. In the 70s, it actually went on to the critically endangered, correct? It sure did. Yeah. Uh, there was a film made in 1947 that showed an estimated 40,000 Kemp's Ridley's nesting on one day at the main beach in Rancho Nuevo, Mexico. Well, that's the very year that my father graduated from the Naval Academy. Oh, wow. That generation. <laughs> and then his daughter comes here. Yeah. And the population is crashing and not even reached the low point yet. And she's working to try to help save and recover the species. So it was very quick uh, due to uh, taking of the eggs as a supposed aphrodisiac and loss of the turtles. And that's what uh, actually promoted the great one of the greatest risks, yeah? Yeah. Uh, and it's funny, that still is what's threatening most endangered species, is these ridiculous beliefs they've got. A lot of them, unfortunately, so. Mm -hmm. Well, we're thrilled to have you here. We're so disappointed that we, we can't have the public out for our, our normal public releases. Uh, because we do want to share these animals with them. They're, they're part of our heritage here. Yes. We want everyone to be able to enjoy. And so I appreciate you being here so that we can help bring this to them through technology, even if they can't be here in person. See, 
I've fished this beach since 94, and I can honestly say this is one of the best things I've seen actually happen on the beach. I just wish my kids were here when they were young to see this as well. So a lot of people will see it. I'll make sure of that. Well, we're, we're grateful for that, and hopefully we'll be back in future years because that's one of the highlights, to see the children in the morning run to be in the front row at the public release and get so excited to see these little babies and perhaps make an impression on them that changes their whole life and they decide to be uh, in some profession taking care of the environment or uh, some, something else, oh, yeah. a researcher of some yes, sort. Look at them ones, they're, they're actually out there now, they're breaking the surf, they're actually going out. It's just in them, they, there's nothing they can do about it, they've got to go that way. It's in them and, and with what we see at these releases is grown men with, with tears in oh, their yeah, eyes. Oh yeah, I can see that. Because the thought of these tiny turtles on their own, no mother showing them where to go, no one to protect them, they're on their own going on this lifelong journey. The odds are so much against any individual one of them, but they take with them a hope that some will survive and some will come back and start that circle of life back over here again so that more and more people in the future get the chance to see yeah. these magnificent little baby turtles. Now they actually survive by predatory overload, isn't it? Isn't it? And that's what, what's yeah. happened? Yeah, so. Absolutely. That's one of the... the uh, it's thought to be survival strategy uh, over ecological times for the species is they nest in these large groups, synchronous uh, masting and nests, uh, mm -hmm. a nest called Arabatis. The females all come up at once, and so the eggs hatch at once. And the tense rhythms are slow compared to a lot of other sea turtle hatchlings. But if there's thousands and thousands of you all on the beach uh, at the same time, because um, like the right. at the same time they hatch at the same time there's so many the predators can't possibly eat them all so that was their strategy okay. but then the numbers got reduced so much that that wasn't you know wasn't effective we've got far more predators than we do little little turtles right so we've for a, a natural situation like that to be effective again you've got to get the numbers way up now, DNA-wise, you've, you've got samples of their, their DNA, and, and now you can prove beyond doubt that your tails that you released are coming back to this beach, correct? Correct, and that's the, uh, that's the, the highlight for... What did you think body. when that happened? Were you over the moon? I was over the moon. Yeah. Over the moon when the geneticists told us that they indeed had proved it. We saw the numbers increasing, just like in Mexico. Right. And some skeptics might say, oh, these turtles are, are uh, you know, oh, they're just coming from Mexico or someplace else. And we we believe that the propagation, the, the, the husbandry, the care of these eggs, those turtles were coming back here. And then when we proved it genetically, just this past year, it's really important, scientifically important, from right. a conservation standpoint, and it's really gratifying to, to know that it's, it's working. That's awesome. Uh, today, with this wind as well, and the wave height, and what we're seeing here today, uh, is a good potential day for more more turtles coming ashore, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. June is, is our double duty month, where we've got hatching, and it's still the peak of the nesting season. And the Kemp's Ridleys tend to nest on uh, windy days. And when you think of a daytime nesting turtle, you know, having wind on your back keeps you a little bit cooler and right. also blows away the predator traps, makes it more difficult for the predators oh, to find point. where the nest is located. And your volunteers, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's record heat today, too, so yeah. I think the, the wind will be welcome. But, yeah. but it, we did have nesting yesterday, so we're thinking that we might have more today. Uh, this is so, so very cool. This is awesome. Here's the last one for this release. There you go. There you go, mates. Bon voyage. Hey, this is Nick away. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. I certainly enjoyed seeing it. Watching them little baby turtles scarper towards the sea remind me of watching a baby being born. It's in them. It's natural desire to get out there. Unfortunately, they've got the odds stacked against them with everything that's going on. Anyhow, thank you, Donna, for allowing us to be here to share this with you. We're getting the word out as best we can. Mm -hmm.